Hi guys, welcome back uh, Hi, today. Guys, great to have you on board today. Oh, it's a pleasure. Um, so guys, today we are going to do a quick ride to Erisaira. Um, so I will explain everything that I am doing so that uh, for you guys that it's the first time that you are seeing a uh, self-drive uh, video on the x G6. So I will give you a couple of details on that. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, so that you get familiar with the car and the systems that he has available. So I will try in this single uh, trip to explain again the self-drive, the full self-drive package that we currently have deployed in our cars, okay? So while we are uh, just riding uh, to the highway, let me explain the basics. So. As you know, XPeng has a, a thing called XPilot, so it's not the XNGP that it's the full uh, blown feature pack of self-driving. So in China, if you see some videos in China for the exact same, uh, same cars, you will see um, those cars doing a bunch of some other things and the screen will be different. Um, so you will see it uh, in a different way. What the car has, uh, and I will not talk about the self-parking and stuff like that because it belongs to the uh, self-package, let's call it like that. But I will ignore that part now. Let's talk only about the driving aspect. So we have ACC, that is Adaptive Cruise Control. Basically, what this does is you set up the, the speed that you want the car to um, uh, do and the car will execute then at that speed, but it will adjust, that's why it's adaptive. Uh, to the speed of the car in front of you, okay? So uh, even if you set up the car to um, drive at 120, if the car in front of you is at 90 kilometers per hour, your car will be at 90 kilometers per hour also, and the distance to the car in front of you will be defined based on a setting that you have also available, that is the distance to the car in front of you. I have a full video on the distance because I had some comments on, about that, so I did just a video for that, a very short one that you can watch over here. So then you have LCC, then this is now getting on uh, level two uh, assisted driving, self-driving, and uh, this means uh, lane centering uh, control. Basically, what the car does is it will try to recognize the lanes, as you can see, so the car is always uh, looking for the information on the uh, roads uh, based on the cameras that he has and then it will try to keep the car inside the lane where you are. So obviously that situation it depends on also the conditions of the road. So as you can see the car has some trouble to identify uh, the types of lanes that you have here if the lanes are not correctly um, drawn in the roads. Okay, these systems are designed to be used on the highways. Uh, I know that many people, including me, uh, we do use it in some other uh, roads, but be careful with that. Then you have finally a uh, last uh, topic that is the ALC, that it's auto lane change. So basically what the car does is when you press the stall to ask for a change of direction, the car will then identify if it is possible or not. You will see it on the screen and make that auto lane automatically for you. And then it will resume back on ACC and LCC control. Okay, basically these are the functions that we have available. We are entering now. I will activate now self-drive. So I am already on self-drive. So you saw that to activate is just one stalk down is to activate ACC. Two times down is to activate ACC plus LCC. Okay, so now we are entering in the highway and the car is driving by itself, but I am now called driving mode because I am helping the car to perform the maneuvers and he is just accelerating in this case for me. Okay, so I will move now to the highway and I am back on my lane. Now that the speed has changed to 120, I have it at 75, so I will now adjust the speed by pressing and long pressing the stalk down and it will adjust the speed to the current speed limit of this road, okay? Now the car is self-driving, you should have always the hands up next to the wheel because again, this is assisted driving and you need to 
use your hands to uh, adjust and help the car to do whatever maneuver that is required. So let me already make here uh, manually uh, take over, okay? And I am now on the other lane. So I did it manually. I could have made it automatically. I will do now. So I will return back to my lane automatically. So it's very easy. It is being done now, okay? So now, so I did one lane change manually and another lane change automatically, okay? Now I will leave the car at 120. I'm approaching uh, a truck here and the car will now resume and slow down based on the speed of this truck. As you can see, it is slowing down now because of the car in front of me and it is adjusting the speed of it, okay? Now I will reduce here the speed on my wheel because I will leave this highway so here we are at 75 kilometers per hour in our uh, lane and the car is performing it together with us. And now I have here a problem, so I will have to brake, okay? So I'm braking manually and the system is disengaged because of this truck, it's normal, okay? So I have already explained how to activate. Deactivating you can do in two ways. So if you press the brake, it will deactivate. And there is another way to deactivate the system. So, but let me show you how. So if I will brake now, brake, and you see that it was changed to manual, okay? It's activated now. And the second way to deactivate the system is using the stock. Again, as you can see, let me deactivate. So pressing up, it is deactivated again, okay? So the truck's left, okay? And now the car will speed up according to the speed that I have defined. So it is basically doing it uh, automatically, okay? And now it is going to control now the speed again with the car in front of us. So as you can see, we are in a very uh, high traffic uh, highway at the moment. And the car performs uh, without any problem. So it will now turn the car with, without any problem. Um, so it's always asking me to make small touches to the wheel so that he knows that I am still here. Entry now. So this would be a nice place to have um, a co-pilot. Let me activate. So now we are, we are in co-pilot again, okay. Uh, I will put this at 60 and the car will follow the cars in front of us at the designed uh, speed, but you can help the car to drive. So you see that it will show every time that you make any adjustment, the car will show that you are in co-drive. So for instance, I am now speeding up and even playing with the wheel, so I, as if I was driving manually, uh, but the car lets me do that because I am on co-driving, and now is switching to ACC, and it will switch to LCC also, but I will now press, long press, and the car will activate the speed that was um, allowed here. So let's do this. I will activate now. I am at 100, okay. Let me put 120 here. So I define the speed at 120 and now I will disengage, okay? So the last speed that I defined was 120. Now I am uh, driving slower. So it keeps here the information, okay? And let's do this. I will activate now at 108 so that you see what happens. So one time you see that it will activate at the speed that I am. Okay, so let me put again 120. Okay, it's defined. Let's disengage, so 120. Let's stop a little bit, so 104. And now let's activate, but now we will activate with the stalk, but leave the stalk down, okay? And it should activate on the last speed defined and not the current speed, okay? So let's do it now. So I am at 100 and down and keep it down. And as you can see, it activated at 120, 
okay? So, let's try to resume here, okay? If you want to activate ACC to the previous um, uh, speeds where you were driving, uh, you need to be below that speed because if you are up, the car will not slow down. So if you are up the speed, so let's imagine again the scenario, you set up 100 previously, you disengage for some reason, and now you want to engage again with the previous one. If you are at 110, if you try to engage even asking for the previous speed, the car will engage with the new speed that you are because you are above that. If you are below that speed, so if you are at 90, and if you activate and keep it down, so a little bit down the stalk, then the car will activate with the previous speed that was 100 in our example, okay? To change lanes, you need to identify it. Sometimes you need to give a little indication that you are ready to do it. Um, sometimes the car does it by itself. Let's, let's try it again. And now there is the sign. I will just take it out and press it. Is it going? No. It says there clearly on the dashboard that I need to touch lightly the wheel. Okay? So let's try again in a different way. So I will do exactly the same thing, but I will not move my hands. So I will try to keep it straight, but in contact so that he is safe. Okay? And let's see if he does this lane change or not. Okay? So let me try again. So I am here pressing. It does. Okay? So I didn't do anything. So the car just detects that I am here and I can do the line change. So again, I am not doing anything, guys. Let's try to do even uh, differently. So like this. Right now, because the um, the the highway is ending. So see, <laughs> with one finger I can do this. Okay, and I think we managed to cover all the things uh, on the ACC, LCC, um, auto lane change. So all the X Pilot uh, fully reviewed in a twenty something minutes uh, drive. I don't think it was bad. And I can tell you that we made around um, 41 kilometers on the highway. I know that it was not in big speeds or anything like that, but we have an average consumption of 14 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometers. I think it's a good consumption for the car. So welcome to Ericeira. We have arrived and I hope you like this video. So that's it, guys. Thank you very much again for uh, the time that you spent here with me. And uh, leave your like, your comments, and uh, share the video with your friends and family. And uh, of course, activate that cell, a bell there so that you are, uh, in fact, um, notified of new videos. And um, that's it. Thank you very much again for the time. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye, guys.